Good afternoon, everyone. Today is the obligatory memorial of St. Monica. She's really a powerful saint, isn't she? St. Monica, have you heard of her? St. Monica is that woman who is the mother of St. Augustine. She's a wonderful prayer, a consistent prayer, a powerful prayer. St. Monica prayed for the conversion of two people in her life, her husband and her son. And even though she thought to herself, day by day, I'm going to pray, she not only thought about it, she did it. And not only did she do it, she believed that her prayers would be answered, and they were. So Monica, that saint who consistently prayed for the spiritual well-being of her husband and her son. May I ask you, who may be a mom and a wife in particular, to pray for your husband and for your children. We hear so many stories of families not practicing the faith. That's a major problem. When people who have been baptized receive their First Holy Communion, their confirmation, went to either a Catholic school or CCD or PrEP, received religious formation, and was guided by you in the home, don't practice their Catholic faith anymore. That's a major problem. It's a serious concern. It's an illness and it is a disease. So I would ask you to treat it as such, as a spiritual illness and a spiritual disease. You would not even hesitate to go to the bedside of your husband and go to the bedside of your son or daughter and pray for their well-being. Even more importantly, let's do it now for all those who are spiritually sick, those who have disease of indifference, <clears throat> that have lost the Catholic faith, and maybe have even lost their soul, to ask God every day of your life, asking God to bring them home, back to the sacraments, to celebrate confession, to go back to the regular practice of Sunday Mass, to the regular practice of prayer, to a strong faith life. Look to St. Monica today in a very serious way and make a conscious decision that I am going to be at their spiritual bedside every day, just as I would if they were sick physically. I would be there. I would petition our Lord for their body to get better. Why not petition our Lord for their soul to get better? To have a renewed sense of the Catholic faith that they once knew as a child. Sometimes we say to ourselves, what did we do wrong? I sent them to Catholic school. I sent them to prep or CCD back in the day. I, we celebrated the most sacred holy days of Christmas and Easter. I explained the Bible stories to them. They made their sacraments. What went wrong? Well, nothing that you did. Sometimes the world has a very loud and boisterous voice. And sometimes the world's poison seeps into our Catholic family, our Catholic children, our spouse. We have to make sure that we understand that and do all in our power to make sure that we pray that our Lord and Our Lady will touch their hearts and bring them home again. You know, they're lost. They are lost. 
don't buy into the fact that they're spiritual. Of course they're spiritual. You know why? God gave them a soul. Of course they're spiritual. They're made up of both body and soul. But they're Catholic. They're followers of Jesus Christ. Being spiritual means that I make up my own laws and decisions and whatever I want to do. When do we ever do that? Try to go to work and make up your own decisions and your own and policies. Try to go out in your car and make your own decision whether you're going to go through a red light or not. Go through this country making up your own laws and breaking whatever ones that you don't agree with. And as if you're married, your kids can do whatever they want. They don't have to follow any law. Law is love. Law helps us to bring us to order. Lord, Lord law <laughs> directs our attention to what is good, just, holy, and pure. So, why don't you take the advice of St. Monica? Pray for the spiritual being of your husband, your wife, your children, your grandchildren, your neighbor. When you pray your prayers, include them every single day. <clears throat> you need to go to their bedside spiritually. Their soul is in need of healing. They're away from the sacraments that Jesus gave us. And I look to Monica today, and I think to myself, you know why? She did that. She did that because she loves them, her spouse and her children. And I know you do too. You love your spouse and your children. Pray for them. Offer up your communion for them. Fast for them. Do a sacrificial offering for them and keep them ever close to your heart and your mind. I could only imagine in my own head how any mother would be at the bedside of their spouse and their children asking God to heal them. Heal them. I can't imagine anything more dear than to go to the spiritual bedside of your spouse and your children asking for God to heal them, to bring them home, to allow them to be the follower of Jesus Christ that they have been raised, been baptized into, confirmed, nourished by the Eucharist, and educated in the Catholic faith once again. Was that all a waste of time? Why do we do all of that? Why did you do that? Why did you have them baptized? Communion, confirmation, all through Catholic school, all through prep. Because you're convinced of the gospel and you want to do what is right for them. Because this is what the Lord asked. So do one more thing. Pray for them, sincerely with a mother's love. Pray for your spouse and your children like Monica did for Augustine and her husband. And look what happened. Conversion. And not only that, not only conversion, but Augustine became a priest, then a bishop, and then a great promoter of the Catholic faith. He started the Order of St. Augustine. Do you know the, the Augustinians who run Villanova? That's Augustine. Have you ever re read his confessions? The Confessions of St. Augustine? 
Google that and order it off of Amazon. The Confession of St. Augustine. I read it in my second year in the seminary. It blew me away. I loved it. Our Catholic faith is so rich in theology, conversion, mercy, redemption. It has it all. Why do you think we're the true faith? Sure, we have bumps in our family history. We have struggles and we have sin. But we don't give up on believing in the message of redemption of Jesus Christ. Like any family, we're not all perfect. We all need the Savior. Monica knew that for her son Augustine. We know that from our own family, people in our own family, but we're one global family. We're the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. How many churches are there? Is that church holy? Yes. Is that church Catholic? Yes, it's universal. Is that church apostolic? Absolutely. Divine revelation tells us that. Gives from the very, very word of God, articulate in the person of Jesus Christ and presented to us by the apostles. We're one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. They're the four marks of the church. They're the four pillars in which Christ's church, only one church, has been built upon. And we live in. So, as we celebrate the obligatory memorial of Saint Monica, may you and I be more vigilant on our prayer life for those who have left or become laxed. And let us become stronger and stronger in our conviction. Remember, we're citizens of heaven while we're citizens of this earth. And if we want to really make sure our inheritance is there for us, let us be ever more convinced, diligent, and full of zeal and enthusiasm. But more importantly, let us be filled with the faith that we have received from the moment of our baptism to now to proclaim Jesus as Lord. St. Monica, pray for us. Have a nice day, everybody.